Welcome back to the New Fish channel everyone and I'm going to show you a few tips about helping you set up your pole rollers correctly whether that's using a short pole, long pole, whether you use two rollers or one hopefully these tips will help you on your way because as we all know if you get your position of your pole rollers wrong it can make your day a right pain. What you need to do is take your time, get your rollers set up correctly and then you can enjoy your day's pole fishing. So without further ado let's get you some tips that will help your pole fishing. Okay, so I think the first topic to sort of discuss is whether you should own one roller or two. Now, it all depends on what kind of fishing you do. If you're a chap who only wants to fish four meters, five meters, up to sort of eight meters, one roller's perfectly fine if you want like the, you could buy a Taurus 600, but to be honest, for short pole fishing, a Taurus 500, the smaller one, is perfectly adequate and does exactly what you need it to do. However, if you do go past sort of 10 meters regularly and you're fishing 11 to sort of 16 meters then I strongly suggest you buy two rollers. The beauty of having two obviously you can get your pole nicely balanced behind you so it supports the full weight of the pole. Not only does it make shipping out much simpler and smoother but it protects your pole. If you have just one roller when you're fishing long the pole is put under an immense amount of pressure and could potentially break so that's the last thing you want. So even though the initial outlay of buying two rollers might steam a bit steep on top of your pole trust me it'll pay off in the long run because your pole rollers will last ages and they will protect your pole which is the most important thing. If you own an edge pole, short pole, up, like I say up to eight or nine meters then just get the one roller but anything longer than that then get the two. Now the beauty of having the like the Taurus 600 is you've got this double section so you've got a central post that divides the roller into two sections. Now that's really important. Some, this is a lovely peg today, what I've sat on. You can ship all the way back to 16 meters if I needed to. However, a lot of venues, you can't do that and you've got to break down twice. And that's where having the two independent rollers comes in because it allows you to break down, pop your pole into the pole sock on your box and then use the other side to ship the rest of your pole back. And it's totally not interfered with at all. If it's just a single roller like the 500, it obviously interferes, it wants to work against each other when you've got two poles side by side. And if you fish a venue that's got awkward banks and you know you're gonna to have to double ship a lot of the time, then having a roller that is divided like this is very, very important and will, will pay off in the long run. Yes, it's a bit more expensive, but it will help you out in the long run. But if you know you can go back all in a wanna, the single rollers are perfectly fine. And like I say, they're probably a bit nicer for short pole fishing, a bit kinder on the wallet as well. So that's it, short pole anglers, one roll is perfectly fine but if you are going past 10 11 meters regularly invest in two and it will make your life a lot lot easier so one thing to consider when you are looking at your rollers is the extending leg situation now a lot of fisheries have got awkward banks behind them and you do need the versatility that extending legs give you this particular model has got a triple extending leg that goes over a meter in height so you're going to conquer a lot of bad situations with that it's very important and it's something you've got to bear in mind. If you're going to the shop thinking, right, today I'm buying a new roller, think about where you're fishing. Do I need one that's got triple extending legs like this one? Yes, I know, I, like here, for example, if I draw up in the, the teens, for example, the bank is really high behind you. I have to use this roller at full extension to get past that awkward bank. However, if I was just going to say the Glebe, where it's very low, you may be looking at a roller that maybe you don't need triple extending legs for example so just bear that in mind but use the legs to your advantage i often have them set a little bit higher than probably what i need to to make shipping out much more comfortable and we'll show you that in a second so yeah look at that that's another feature you've got to look at your triple extending legs double extending legs because some rollers even though they look big and chunky don't actually go that high ours go nice and high so you can get over even the trickiest banks but just look at them in the shop or online or wherever you're going to get one don't just assume that because it's a nice big pretty roller that it actually goes high sometimes they don't so check that out make sure that if you are looking at a new roller if you do have awkward banks it needs to go to a meter really to be able to conquer those tricky banks okay so let's look at a two roller setup very important and it all starts at this end really your seat box now when I sit round on my uh, foot plate, and this could be a rester box where you don't have a foot plate, or it could be a seat box without a foot plate, make sure your knees are at 90 degrees. Ever so slightly up a little bit doesn't hurt, but the last thing you want, make sure your feet 
a flat on the floor is the is the primary focus when setting your kit up. The reason is not only does it make holding your pole more comfortable, but you essentially become the third roller or the second roller if you use two rollers because your knees being flat on your foot plate end up taking the balance of the pole. And how we're going to set the rollers up allows the balance to be shifted onto your lap when you're shipping out. And I, you'll see me in all my videos, I'll be shipping away, and then there comes a point during the ship where the pole's on my knee and I can just whiz it out and it's dead comfortable because the weight's taken on my knees and not my arms. So it all starts at this end. Set your box up correctly, make sure your legs are in the, in the perfect position without your toes being off the ground, uh, your heels, sorry, being off the ground, and that will make your life easier. So I'm fishing probably 13 meters today. So that largely dictates where I can have my two rollers. But also what I've got to assume is that at some point in this session, I'm on a snake lake here today, I've got some lovely margins. I'm probably going to fish at four or five meters, which means I'm probably going to be fishing top kit and two at some point in my session, which is a common distance for anglers to be fishing. I'll just pop that over there so it's out of my way. So that's a common distance that we're going to be fishing, isn't it? Top kit and two. So that means that I want to still be able to use my front roller when I'm fishing top kit and two. But it helps as a nice little guide. So say I'm fishing 13 meters like today, my first roller is there. I've got about that much of my pole sticking over the first roller and I'm nicely set up. So if I want to fish top kit and two, I can do. I can have my spare bit of pole on that side and then I've got my top kit and two on this side. So absolutely perfect. And it helps me set up my roller in the same position every time because I can get them sections out of my bag pop it on the roller, get my roller in position. It's the perfect starting point. Then, because I, w I know that I'm going to be fishing across that far bank, because it just looks fantastic. I then find where the balance point is. So I'm shipping back and it's just there. It's starting to get a bit, ooh. And we're going to position our roller, the furthest roller, so that then roughly two sections is overhanging the back roller-ish. Let's just whiz it out. Look at that, beautiful. Absolutely great, that is. So I've got two sections onto this first roller. I've then got two sections and a half in between the rollers. And then I've got, again, two sections-ish hanging over the back. So I've got a nice balanced setup. The weight of the pole is taken up perfectly over those two rollers. And I can whiz out and be perfectly comfortable. And that's how I do it. I like to have this first one quite close to me because last thing I want is to have any weight on my arms when I'm shipping out. Obviously, I'll show you in more detail when I spin round because it'd be much easier to show you. But that's how I like to do it. That one, if I was fishing 16 metres, would have to push back a little bit and I'll show you a little trick I've got set up with my rod bag there in a minute. Um, but if I was fishing 16 metres, I'd have to shove the whole thing back a little bit more and that would mean that I'd have to have something else for me top kit and two line. My rod bag comes into it then. However, for 30 meters like I'm fishing today, that's a nice little setup. It means that I can just whiz it out on that front roller. That's taking all the weight from me. Then it transfers onto my lap and I'm shipping out and I'm fishing. Very, very simple. Two sections behind me. Again, and then you're just looking for that balance point. The last thing you want is for that to zoom down like that because you'll spill all your bait everywhere. Likewise, you don't want it too far away where you putting too much pressure on this front roller. So it's all about finding that balance when you're shipping out with it. It's so worth taking your time when setting up. Look at your rollers, look at your lie your land, get them set up perfectly. But like I say, if I can, when I'm fishing 30 meters, I like to have my top kit and two just getting onto the roller and then the rest of it behind me nicely balanced. So that's one thing to think about. That's one way of setting it up. Okay, so one thing you would have noticed, and it's just a little bonus tip this is, that the Taurus rollers have like a little bucket hoop on them. And someone actually put on Facebook the other day, I don't know what they're for, what are they for? And that's exactly what they are, they're a bucket hoop. So not necessarily when I'm fishing it with a minimal extension like I have today, but when I jack this roller right up, love to make sure it's secure. Last thing you want is a pole roller to be knocking over in strong winds. And filling a bucket up with water, your bags of ground that you take with you, whatever it is that gives it some weight is a great idea. It's a brilliant way of just making sure it makes the roller sort of sit in a little bit and it'll just steady it up a little bit. So a great little tip that is, bring yourself a bucket. That you should do anyway for mixing your ground bait and whatnot. But it just allows your whole setup to become more stable. Put some weight on it, takes all that rock out of the roller. Brilliant, brilliant tip that is. Another point to consider is the actual axis that your roller sat on. 
in relation to your pole. If you've ever had it when you set your roller up and your pole's always trying to go to one side or the other, or it even spins, like your roller will spin, it'll be because this isn't right. It's maybe set up like that, or a little bit off cock that way. Make sure it's perfectly square. So when you're setting it up, make sure everything's aligned, roll it out if you have to, and you can see the, roller, the pole is staying right in the middle of the roller because I've got it perfectly square. If I was to put it off square, look, it's trying to pull towards me. If I did it the other way, if my rod bag wasn't in the way, it'd constantly be going the other direction, which, like I say, can cause your pole to roll when you've got kinder pots on and stuff like that. It's just a nightmare. And then when you're shipping back, it's pulling to one side and you may not hit your back roller. Just don't want it. That's not what we want. So it's worth taking your time. Make sure that your pole is running perfectly square through that and it's not pulling either way. It'll make your, make your pole fishing so much easier and much smoother. So as I say, in a perfect world, when you're getting your roller set up, you'll have that top kit and two situation where you can get onto your roller. But if you go into venues where you're fishing longer, that first roller has to go back. Otherwise, we're all out of balance. So what I'm going to do with my top kit and two, that's where your rod bag comes in, your carry-all. It's brilliant for this. Now, often when I'm fishing, uh, say I've got a bank with me that's like this high, straight behind me, but it's flat, I'll often use my rod bag as my roller. It's, it's a brilliant, smooth way of doing it. But it also comes in very handy here at this end. So I've got my top kit and two situation here, and I've just got my rod bag there to put my pole on it. It's a simple thing, but amaze me how few people put the rod bag there. If you even position it further this way, it'll take the, the butt of your landing net handle as well. So you've even got that situation. It's taking the balance off that. It's just a brilliant, brilliant little third roller that is for free because you carry it with you anyway. So just bear that in mind. Put your rod bag at the base of the front roller, just this way a bit. It'll take your top kit in two. So if you do have to put your rollers further back to take 16 meters of pole, then you've got that option there to keep your pole off the ground. Right, so we've got our rollers set up. And I just want to talk you through the process of shipping out how I do it. And like I mentioned in the first part where I talked about my box setup, as you can see, my legs, are now I'm on my foot plate, my legs are perfect. Flat, we're comfortable. The knees are ready to take the weight of the pole when I'm shipping out. Word on the settings, I like to have my front roller ever so slightly higher than my back roller, if that makes sense. That means that there's almost like a pivot in point that trans transfers the weight of the pole onto my lap when I'm shipping out. It can be perfectly flat, that's fine, but Ever so slightly, top heavy, can be really, really effective. It can make it very, very comfortable to ship out. So I'll just grab my top kit there. As you can see, you know when your rollers are set right, because you won't actually need your pole stock. That's obviously there, because when I'm breaking down a couple of times or whatever it's there, it's a good thing to have. But if you get your rollers set perfectly, and I'm, I'm blessed that I'm in a good peg here for it, but if you get your rollers set dead right, it'll just sit there perfectly fine. No problem, it, you won't actually need this. That means you, you set perfect. So let's get our top kit, we'll pop it on. And as you can see, the roller is just above my knee height there, because the front roller's just set at its minimum height. And I can just chip out everything. I've got no weight on me at all because the rollers are taking the weight and it's coming off the back roller now and it, I can feel the weight just ever so slightly tipping over. I can put the pole onto my lap now. Look, it's perfectly balanced. So let me just demonstrate that again. So I'll put my top kit on. All of the weight is on my roller. I'm shipping out. I don't even have to worry about it. It's not twisting because we made sure our roller's nice and square. It's just come off the back roller now and you can see the weight ever so slightly is tip heavy now. So I can transfer that onto my lap and just whiz out. You'll see I'm not even holding the pole. I'm just balancing it on my knees. I can ship out nice and steady to my spot and start fishing. Then when I hook a fish, I'm straight back onto that front roller because it's nice and it's relatively close. It's like sort of two and a bit sections behind me. I can ship it back, take my top kit off. Pole's gonna sit there because it's perfectly set up. So I've got this almost ever so slight pivoting point, which I think is really important. Combined with me, I'm essentially the third roller. As you can see, I'm not straining, I'm not stressing, I'm not holding the weight of the pole. The only time I'm holding the weight of the pole is when it's across my knees, when I'm finally at the fishing position. You see that look, nice and smooth. Everything's perfect, onto my lap. Out we go. We, pick, we can pick our catapult up because our everything's nice and set. Ping some pellets in, we're away. We'll be catching loads of fish today, I'm sure. So that's how simple it is. Make sure you set up at this end right. Like I say, you could be, it could be a rester box, it's your seat box, whatever. Make sure that you, and this goes for holding your pole anyway, regardless of your seat box set up. You wanna have it across your lap like that. 
So you can just strike with your knee. You're not putting any undue pressure on your pole. Strike into the fish, come back. Nice and smooth, it takes all the weight of the pole. It, and because, again, we've got that pivoting sort of situation going on, it naturally finds the back roller anyway, and we're good to go. It's a brilliant, brilliant way. And with regards to angles when you're shipping as well, you want to be hooking the fish and coming, if you're, if you're right-handed like me, you want to be hooking the fish and ever so slightly coming to your left. If you're on a canal or a river where you need a bit more tension, I'll often come a bit more dramatically. So I'll strike, bring the pole a little bit more to my left and then come back on more of an angle to make sure I keep tension in my elastic. But for carp fishing, that's not as much of an issue. So you can just set the rollers ever so slightly if you're right-handed to your right, as, you, as your fishing position to your right ever so slightly, if you're left-handed the other way. Obviously, it depends on ob obstacles behind you, but that's a general rule. So you hook the fish, you drop your pole ever so slightly to the left and then bring it back. So you're always keeping tension to the fish. So as you can see, I'm just whizzing out there, nice and easy. I'm gonna strike ever so slightly, bring the fish to my left. In this case, I've got a great big lily bed there, so I'm gonna have to do that anyway. Pole on the rollers. It's finding its own point. I can take off, got my fish, absolutely brilliant. It's very simple, it's very effective. Pole rollers are a must when you're pole fishing. They make the whole thing so much easier. It's a brilliant, brilliant thing to have. And getting them set up, it's worth spending the time to make sure that you get them set up dead right. It'll make your day much more enjoyable and it will catch you more fish because you won't lose many because everything is nice and smooth.